We're asked to solve the linear inequalities in one variable. We're asked to give the solution using inequality notation, interval notation, and as a graph. We solve linear inequalities in one variable, just like we solve linear equations in one variable, except if we multiply or divide both sides by a negative, we must reverse the inequality symbol. Let's take a look at why that is. On the left, if we begin with four is less than six, which is true, and multiply both sides by negative two, we would have negative eight is less than negative 12, which is false, which is why we must reverse the inequality symbol and write the inequality as negative eight greater than negative 12. Similarly, if we go back to four is less than six and divide both sides by negative two, we would have negative one less than negative three, which once again is false. To make the inequality true, we reverse the inequality and state the inequality as negative one is greater than negative three. So going back to our two examples, let's solve the first linear inequality. We begin by subtracting three on both sides of the inequality to isolate the variable term negative four x. Notice we're not multiplying or dividing by a negative, and therefore we do not reverse the inequality. Simplifying three minus three is zero, we have negative four x greater than 15 minus three is equal to 12. Next to solve for x, we divide both sides by negative four. Because we're dividing by a negative, we do have to reverse the inequality. So simplifying on the left, negative four divided by negative four is one, one times x is x. We reverse the inequality to less than and then 12 divided by negative four is negative three. X less than negative three is the solution using inequality notation. Before we give the solution using interval notation, let's graph the solution. The solution is X less than negative three. Because X is not equal to negative three, only less than negative three, we make an open point on negative three, and then we make an arrow to the left where values are less than negative three. Recall if we continue going left, we would approach negative infinity. Remembering this is helpful to write the interval notation. For interval notation, we have the interval from negative infinity to negative three. The interval does not include negative three, and therefore we use a rounded parenthesis to the right of negative three, and we always use a rounded parenthesis to the left of negative infinity or to the right of positive infinity. We have the open interval from negative infinity to negative three, for interval notation. Looking at our second example, we first want to isolate the variable term negative three x by subtracting seven on both sides of the inequality. Simplifying seven minus seven is zero, leaving us with negative three x on the left, which is less than or equal to negative five minus seven is negative 12. Again, we did not multiply or divide by a negative, and therefore we did not reverse the inequality. And now to solve for x, we divide both sides by negative three. Here, because we are dividing by a negative, we do need to reverse the inequality. Simplifying negative three divided by itself simplifies to one, leaving us with x. Reversing the inequality, we have greater than or equal to negative 12 divided by negative three is positive four. This is the solution using inequality notation, x greater than or equal to positive four. Again, let's go ahead and graph this. Notice here, because we have x greater than or equal to four, four is a solution, and therefore we make a closed point on positive four, and because x is greater than or equal to four, we make an arrow to the right. If we continued going right, we would approach positive infinity. Again, this is helpful to write the interval notation. For interval notation, we have the interval from four to infinity, the interval does include four, we use a square bracket to the left of four, and for infinity, we always use a rounded parenthesis to the right. I hope you found this helpful.